Hi everyone. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. In his book entitled, believe it or not, Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, Dr. Richard Carlson says this, often we allow ourselves to get all worked up about things that upon closer examination aren't really that big a deal. And he talks about life, um, sort of daily life as being deep in the thick of thin things. And that's not easy to say. And life is full of thin things, as indeed it is. He goes on to say this, that we may focus on little problems and concerns and blow them out of proportion. Uh, you know, for example, a stranger cuts us up in traffic and rather than let it go and, and pray for the blighter, I mean, for the person concerned, uh, and get on with our day, we convince ourselves that we're justified in our anger and irritation. And there are lots and lots of things that, of course, could come into this category of irritants, really small things like, you know, waiting to be served in a restaurant or queuing up outside a bank or a post office or wherever it might be, a supermarket these days, getting stuck in traffic behind a temporary traffic light, uh, that kind of stuff. Or maybe slightly more serious things like listening to criticism that's unjustified from someone who's uninformed or, you know, having to do most of the work and not be helped in what you're doing. So what do you do with these small irritants? Well, of course, you know, the Bible does say, cast your cares upon him because he cares for us. So you complain to Jesus, don't you? Uh, and someone did that in the Bible. And in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, we read about Jesus visiting the home of good friends of his, uh, Lazarus, Mary and Martha in Bethany. And uh, Jesus had a very close connection with this family. And uh, Jesus arrives. Now, he's welcomed by Martha. Now, whether Martha was expecting Jesus to have his disciples with him or for his disciples to arrive later on, we don't know. But uh, anyway, she carries on making preparations for a meal, which would have been quite an elaborate task. I mean, believe it or not, in those days, you didn't have microwave ovens, slow cookers, fridge freezers. So young people today, you need to know there was a time when these things didn't exist, okay? No um, delivery services or a kind of restaurants that deliver food to your door, that kind of stuff. No. So Martha, it says, was busy. Uh, and it says that, that she was distracted with much serving. If you pardon the pun, she had a lot on her plate. And she was doing all the work by herself. And eventually she just gets, you know, overwhelmed by this. And, um, and, and she just gets irritated and has enough. So she complains to Jesus and she says, Jesus, don't you care that I'm doing all the work by myself and Mary's not helping me? Tell her to help me. So here we have Martha telling Jesus that he doesn't care. How about that then? And uh, also giving Jesus an instruction saying, tell Mary to help me. So maybe Martha was expecting Jesus to jump to it and uh, sort it out. But no. In fact, it was Martha who received the mild reproof from Jesus. He says, Martha, Martha, you're worried about and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. So Jesus was not only telling Martha not to sweat the small stuff, but he was actually encouraging her to refocus her priorities on things that actually have more value. Um, a little while ago, there was a break in. Um, I heard about a, a large department store and I don't know where it was. But um, anyway, the intruders were um, disturbed and, and they didn't take anything. It wasn't until the store opened, I think on the following Monday or whenever it was, that the uh, <coughs> store uh, staff discovered that the intruders had changed all the price tags on the goods in the uh, store. And what was expensive was now dirt cheap. And what was cheap was now mega expensive. And it ap caused absolute chaos, you know, far more so than had they actually stolen some things. It caused chaos. So when, you know, you're tempted to be irritated by small things, maybe ask yourself some questions. The first question is this, does this really matter? It's good to go through this mental process, believe you me. Does this really matter? In, in like one or two years time, is what's happening now gonna have made any significant difference to my life? Thirdly, 
in the light of eternity and issues of life and death, where does this rate in importance? And lastly, is the damage to my well-being, my you know sense of peace, worth the you know hassle, the internal hassle that I'm putting myself through? So today, when you're tempted to sweat the small stuff, don't. Take a step back and take a deep breath and say, this is small stuff and I'm not going to break into a sweat about it. You know, that means that some things won't get done. It means that some things will be have, to, have to be let, let go of. But believe it or not, life will still go on and you'll feel a good deal better for it. So may God bless you mightily today. In Jesus' name.